And can everyone mute if you're not talking, please? And we are live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Zoom event from Brave New Films. We've done many events over the years. We've done screenings at homes, at schools, at churches, at bookstores, uh, at, on Capitol Hill. This is the first time we've done a Zoom premiere. So let us know how it works for you, where you see the film, where you see this conversation, and where you're able to participate. So thank you all for this. And you're going to see the film in just a minute or so. It's a film that calls attention to what is going on with the Asian American crimes, attacks, and racism. At a time when the Black Lives Matter folks have been heroically and importantly bringing racism to the center stage of America, a debate around policy, around what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. At the same time, there's been a significant increase in attacks of the varied kind on Asian Americans. The film is going to show you, put a face on that. And then we'll be hearing from some elected officials, some celebrities, some actors and actresses who are also activists, and a doctor who is highlighted in the film and we'll talk about his experience. For those of you in the press, if you wish to ask questions, you can do it in one of two ways. There's a chat box or a question and answer box at the bottom, and you can also raise your hand using that function, which you will be able to do. So when we're finished, we will be able to take questions. So with that, let's start. And Renato, if you could show the film, please. Have you had a hate crime directed at you or at someone you love? There's been a horrible explosion of hate crimes in this country. And many of those hate crimes have been directed towards Asian Americans. Based on false information, based on lies. And it has to be stopped. We must stop the xenophobia. We must stop the racism. We must stop the hate. Announcing some important developments in our war against the Chinese virus. Why do you keep calling this the Chinese virus? There are reports of dozens of incidents of bi bias against Chinese Americans in this country. There has been an uptick in hate crimes against the Asian community. <laughs> the Chinese virus, the fight against the Chinese virus. Harassment and bias, anti-Asian violence. There was a person who was not happy with what we were covering. He said to me uh, to get out of his country with an expletive and that I was responsible for this, uh, referring to my ethnicity. Our daughter called us a few months ago to say that while she was crossing the street, a man, total stranger, yelled out a hateful racial slur and told her to go back to where she came from. I know friends who have been threatened, who have been verbally assaulted, had things thrown at them, even had threats of harm to their children. He was walking down the street last week when four people attacked him. Let's all people should stay hey, get back. Oh. American son, we don't want <laughs> you here. That's why we elected President <laughs> Trump. One White House official who used the term Kung Flu. Do you think that puts Asian Americans at risk, that people no, might target them? No, not at all. I think they probably uh, would agree with it 100 percent. This man and his two children stabbed at a Sam's Club. The suspect thought the family was infecting people with the coronavirus. Get out of our country! Get out of the United States! I was walking my dog and they body slammed me and kicked my dog and my dog screamed. He yelled at me on the train and said, you people brought this virus here. 
Middle school students Jawa and Jamin Gong say they were harassed near the Spring Garden subway station. It was something about the coronavirus and like, do you have your mask on or something? Just because we look Chinese doesn't mean we have the coronavirus. He can hit me right in the face and he like knocked me pretty much unconscious. Kylan Nguyen says he was crossing the street when a dispute with a driver escalated. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. This photo of his speech with the word Chinese replacing corona went viral. Ethnicity does not cause the virus. It comes from China. Most of the cases came from Europe. What's your assessment of those studies? Well, I think that's probably correct. Uh, Europe became the epicenter pretty quickly after China. In February, most of the genomes point back to Europe and not China. It comes from China. I want to be accurate. We didn't see the spike in anti-Asian violence until President Trump started saying Wuhan virus, China virus. The virus of hate is scapegoating the Asian American Pacific Islander community as the ones that brought about the coronavirus, and that's not true. In just one month, Stop AAPI Hate received nearly 1,500 reports of racist incidents across the country directly linked to COVID-19. The mayor says he's seeing an uptick in anti-Asian bigotry. You dirty Chinese, and he just kept saying that over and over again. I've never felt anything like this before. A woman who's Asian says she was punched by another woman in Midtown Manhattan, and she accused her of having the COVID-19 virus. <laughs> The FBI has warned of a potential surge in hate crimes still to come. I feel an animosity that I've never felt before. We're your friends, your neighbors, or even the doctors and nurses that are risking their lives to help yours. The essential workers and the ones on the front lines doing their part to try to keep us all safe. But they're the ones being targeted. You guys, I'm not a virus. Asian Americans are feeling hate infect every part of our lives. We're better than this. Diversity is what makes America great. So. Thank you for running the video, Renato. Um, Go ahead and start your video, Robert. Um, hey, are we back now? Good to go. Okay, Zoom challenges, thank you. Uh, we just got word that Congressman Liu is still uh, tied up in the Judiciary Committee. So we'll change our programming order just a little bit. Renato, if you're ready, can we show the video from uh, Senator Kamala Harris now, and then we'll move on to the other panelists? Hi, everyone, and congratulations on the premiere of Pandemic of Hate, Anti-Asian Racism During COVID-19. I want to thank Brave New Films and Robert Greenwald for using this film to make it clear that the rise in discrimination, intimidation, and hate against Asian Americans is disturbing and it's, inex it's inexcusable. It's on all of us to speak up and to report and condemn this hate wherever and whenever it occurs. And there's no question that the racializing of coronavirus by the president and members of Congress is shameful and has put the AAPI community at risk of further discrimination and harm. That's why we introduced a hate crimes resolution in the United States Senate, which calls on public officials to denounce discrimination against Asian Americans. And it calls on officials across the country to investigate and, if necessary, prosecute hate crimes against the AAPI community. We must all do our part in fighting anti-Asian discrimination because we know there is more that unites us than divides us. And we must continue to reject hatred, to look out for one another, and to embrace our shared humanity. Thank you and take care. Thank you. Renato, can you 
turn it the Zoom discussion part back on, please. We're good. Okay. Um, so we're going to, as I said, change the program around a little bit. I want to first echo what Senator Harris said and the reason for the video and the reason for bringing everybody together today is to call attention to what is going on and to also use the short film as a tool to encourage people to take action, to speak up, to speak out, whether it be personally, whether it be legislatively, and the film as a small nonprofit, which Brave New Films is, will be available for free to everyone all across the country. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce Kelly Hu, who has been a working actress for over 30 years. She's best known for her roles in X-Men and The Scorpion King. And she's very active in social justice issues, especially around environmental causes in her native Hawaii. Kelly? Kelly, you need to be go, go off mute. Kelly, you're, you're muted. Second, there we go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you, Robert. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, I have to admit that I was a little bit hesitant about joining today's event for a few reasons. You know, I wasn't sure that I was qualified to speak at this event. You know, I, I and I, I didn't want to come off as, as tone deaf in the midst of the Black Lives Matter protests. And I'm quite worried about the backlash that I'll receive just showing up at an event like this and having an opinion. Because we all know what it's like to have trolls come after us, you know, the moment you have an opinion about anything at all. But I felt like it was important to muster up the courage because this issue of racism is so much bigger than me and my fears. You know, I have this obligation to use the small platform that I have to bring awareness to what's going on in our community. And I cannot let myself be bullied into silence. You know, I remember when I first started posting about the violence that was happening because Asian Americans were being accused of causing the virus. And I got responses on social media saying, well, my wife and daughter are Asian and I haven't experienced any racism against Asian Americans. So there's no racism against Asians. And of course, soon enough, there were enough incidences documented on social media sites like Next Shark that naysayers were no longer able to deny that it was happening. And so um, I consulted with a couple of uh, women who, I've, who have been very vocal on social media regarding this violence against Asian Americans, Dr. Connie Wan and May Lee. And I was reminded that the Black Lives Matter movement and the movement to end racism against Asian Americans are not segmented. They didn't, uh, they, they, they did this amazing podcast on May Lee's show months before the George Floyd uh, protests even started happening and talking about the importance of solidarity with other communities of color. And in the past, Asian communities have not been as vocal about our support of other communities of color as we should be because things were generally good for us. I mean, nothing was happening to us and what was happening to them doesn't affect us. And some of us are stuck in our cultural habits of not speaking up and not wanting to rock the boat. But guess what? The boat is rocking whether we want it to or not. And there are some very rough seas ahead and no one is going to throw us a life raft and come and save us. So we have to get active and speak up, not just for ourselves, but for other communities of color as well. So this Black Lives Matters movement, it's, it's, it's our chance to join them in solidarity and, and show our brothers and sisters that we care about the systemic racism that is hurting their community as well as ours. Now, I also want to point out that I am not perfect. I mean, I don't have a perfect record. I have not been a perfect ally. And I know that I need to check myself as well. I've had a, a, I have a lot of work to do on myself as well, but I am a work in progress. And I, I want to learn how to be better. I mean, with, without that work, I, 
know that I cannot ask other people to look at themselves and see where they can be better allies and better human beings. And uh, finally, I think it's important to point out that I don't want to make white people afraid that all people of color are banning against them. And, you know, this is a war on white people because this is a war on racism. We need allies from all communities to join us because we can't do this alone. I mean, we certainly cannot do this without, uh, without our white allies as well. And yes, it's going to get even more uncomfortable. And yes, it's going to get even messier than it is now. But we have to lean into the discomfort in order for us to come out of this better people and to come out of this a better community and a better country. Thank you so much, Kelly. And thank you for speaking up and being sensitive as we all have been to how this issue and how this part of racism connects to the amazing and hero heroic work being done by Black Lives Matter. And we'll be behind you as the trolls come after you. Promise. <laughs> Please, <laughs> thank you. We've got a lot of people who are gonna be supporting you. <laughs> but, and we're all gonna rock the boat together. So yes. thank you for that. I, I just got word that Congressman Liu is now with us. Is that accurate? Can somebody uh, put him up. Yes, John is John Yang is signaling he is. Can we have the technology so we can see him and bring him into this? Ah, there he is. Good morning, Hi, Robert. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Good. Thank you for joining us and for leaving the Judiciary Committee to come and participate in um, this premiere of the short film and most importantly, bringing attention to the issue that actually when you came and spoke to Brave New Films, uh, or maybe it was on Zoom, you were the first one who called our attention to the size and significance of this issue and how the disgusting spread of racism, primarily in the Black Lives Movement, was also impacting in the Asian American community. So with that, the um, floor is all yours. Uh, thank you, Robert, uh, for that uh, terrific video. Uh, I was able to watch most of it, even though uh, my Zoom video wasn't on, but I could see your video. So thank you for doing that powerful piece and to Brave Youth Films for all your great work. I also want to thank uh, Kelly Hu for your uh, powerful statement, as well as all the panelists for being uh, on the Zoom call today. And I just want to note that what we're seeing now uh, is not a one-off incident. Uh, there's a history of discrimination uh, against Asians in America. We had the whole yellow peril uh, hysteria early uh, in our country's history. Uh, we had the Chinese Exclusion Act. We had the internment of Japanese Americans. Uh, we had the murder of Vincent Chen. And then now we've got uh, this uh, discrimination against Asian Americans because of the coronavirus. And we just have to fight back. Uh, now, it also turns out uh, that the overwhelming majority of Americans are good people, uh, but they don't go around thinking about this issue. Uh, people's lives are busy. Uh, you got this a pandemic happening. And so folks aren't thinking in their minds, hey, what about discrimination against Asian Americans? So we just have to highlight this issue and point it out when it happens. Uh, when the president of the United States started using terms like Chinese virus, uh, that did spike the number of hate incidents uh, to Asian Americans across America. Uh, I wrote an op in the Washington Post to push back on that. A number of organizations uh, did so as well, and other elected officials and uh, grassroots activists. As a result, the president has, in fact, said that less. Uh, hopefully, he won't say it uh, anymore. And public pressure and public sentiment still does work, but I think it's important for people to speak out uh, and to highlight this issue. And thank you to Brave New Films for doing exactly that. And also want to uh, thank Congresswoman Judy Chu for all her help and support. Uh, as you know, she is chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, also known as KPAC, and under uh, her leadership, we now have the highest number of uh, Asian Americans uh, in Congress. And so we're seeing uh, progress, uh, but at the same time, we do have to fight discrimination and look forward to uh, answering any questions that anyone may have. Thank you very much, uh, Congressman. And the reminder to the press that there are two options if you wish to ask questions, which we'll be able to do as soon as we finish, that you can either put them in the Q&A or you can raise your hand, which functionality you have on your Zoom. Um, 
And again, thank you, Ted, for the leadership, for the role you've played, and for using your social media so effectively to message, to spread the word, and to uh, encourage people to take action, which is ultimately what we all want and ultimately what the free film it will enable us to do. And with that, I'd like to move on and introduce Brian T, who can currently can be seen as a series regular on NBC, Chicago Med. He's also starred as DK, the Drift King in the Fast and Furious and is active in social justice and is a Los Angeles native. Brian, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Robert. And thank you for everyone for putting this together and, and speaking out for the Asian American community. Um, I too, similar to Kelly, had sensitive feelings about being on this panel at this particular time. And it dawned on me that I feel as an Asian American being dubbed the model minority, we can't be afraid to speak out anymore. I think that's really holding the community back and also holding our community in connection with other communities as well. Um, so when the anti-racism with Asian Americans um, due to COVID is happening, I, I immediately reacted and wanted to speak out because it was happening to me, my fellow brothers and sisters and friends and family members. And I, and I immediately had this knee jerk reaction so I did the PSA and I've been very active in that particular situation, but, and I have to be completely honest with myself, before this happened, when Trayvon Martin incident happened, when Eric Green incident happened, when Breonna Taylor, I was angry as hell, very pissed off, thought that that was wrong. But I looked back and I didn't do anything about it. I didn't really say anything about it. And then I did this PSA because it happened to me. And then George Floyd happened. And I had to really sit back and, and, and think about my situation and what I'm really doing if I, if I consider humanity and togetherness, especially in this United States as a whole. And why I didn't react when all of those situations were happening, but yet I reacted when an Asian American anti-racism situation is happening. And I had to say to myself, imagine if I was African-American. Imagine if all of these things that are happening for over 400 years. So then in lieu of our conversation now, I only want to reiterate to the Asian American community that we have to speak out, not just for ourselves, but for all ethnicities all across the board. You know, um, the Black Lives Movement's the Black Lives Matter movement is kind of spearheading all of us to kind of come together. And I feel like we should follow in footstep side by side with them and allow our voices to be heard that racial injustices have to stop and stop for good. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for speaking out. I mean, one of the many amazing things that Black Lives Matter has done in this period of time in addition to you know, the extraordinary protests and the extraordinary actions has been to cause every sing almost every single American to look at themselves, to ask the hard questions. What can each of us do that we haven't done? How can we be involved? How can we have an impact? And there is certainly lots and lots to do. With that, I wanna change the order again. I just got word that Congressman Chu is available. Uh, she has an extraordinarily busy and productive schedule. As Ted mentioned, she is chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. They've been a great, great assistance and help in pulling all this together. And she also heads the Tri Caucus, which is a joint effort with the CBC, which is the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. Uh, Congressman Chu, are they? Are you there, Renato? Can you bring her up? I'm not seeing her on my screen. But... Hmm. Well, I see quite a nice plant. I see an American flag, <laughs> but I don't see Congressman Chu. Does anyone have word? Or shall we move on to? It looks, 
it looks like she just stepped out, so we might want to switch it up and then come back to her. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Fu, is he on? Yeah. Yep, right here. Okay, so Dr. Fu is the clinical assistant professor in the Department of Medicine at the NYU Hospi Hospitalis Group, and he was a victim of a hate incident that he will talk about as well as his medical background. Thank you, Dr. Fu. He mentioned he'd stepped out from the hospital duties to be with us today, and we really appreciate that. Well, I, really, I really appreciate you guys, Robert. My, my heart's honestly beating really fast. Um, I'm so nervous and honored to be a part of such accomplished company. Uh, just to kind of echo everyone's sentiment, I, I feel supremely underqualified amongst y'all to be talking about things like this, but I, I am incredibly honored to be given that opportunity. I, I honestly feel like I don't deserve it. Um, but I don't know, maybe this discomfort that I'm feeling is an analogy to the discomfort that everyone's feeling right now in America. And just, if I could highlight a modicum of that, I, I would be very grateful. I've been doing a lot of meditating actually recently on this concept of home and how it's such a privilege to be able to call a place your home, to unabashedly say that you feel a sense of belonging and safety and purpose in a place that you can call your own. I think as Asian Americans, we struggle with a uniquely dual identity where we are at once not fully Asian and at once not fully American or perceived by that, by our, our home here in America. And whenever we go back to the place of our ancestors, we're perceived as not fully Asian either. And the ability to call someplace your home is something that we all fight for on a day-to-day -day basis. Something that we've seen highlighted with our brother diaspora communities um, and with our neighbors here in America. One of the tough things about living in a place with so many singers and so many, so many different actors is that you can feel the disparateness echoing in the background. And I used to sing um, choir in high school. And one of, the, uh, one of the interesting things that happens in choir all the time is that when one section goes sharp and slightly out of tune, another section will almost invariably go flat, almost as a compensatory mechanism for that out of tuneness. And what that does is it creates a cacophony that's not harmonious. You think that by going flat, you can pull that sharpness down a little bit, but you can't quite get at it. Thank you guys, everyone here, for lending your voices to this choir, for trying to rebalance the harmony that we seek in this place, and for trying to make this place feel just a little bit more like home. Thank you, Doctor. Very, very much appreciated. And um, reminder to the press that there's two ways you can ask questions, the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, or you can signal raising your hand. Oh, and I see that Congressman Chu is back. We did a great introduction to the tree that was behind you, Congressman Chu, but um, we will now go to you. Well, thank you, um, Robert Greenwald, the incredible president and co-founder and founder of the Brave New Films. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join you for the premiere of your new short film, Pandemic of Hate. Uh, I'm in, actually in the middle of an important congressional hearing right this minute, so that's why I've been kind of in and out, but I felt that it was important to be able to send my message to you as chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus in Congress, or what we call KPAC. Let me say that the premiere of this video could not have come at a more important time in our nation's history with conversations about inclusivity and racism at the forefront of our national dialogue. Over the past few weeks, Americans have been filling the streets all across the nation to demand justice for the murder of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and other black men, women, and children who've been murdered simply because of the color of their skin. And what is most notable is that the marches are so incredibly multi-ethnic. Americans of all backgrounds are seeing that in order to change things for the better, we need to stand up 
for one another. And that's why as chair of KPAC, I've made sure that we AAPIs have stood side by side with the Congressional Black Caucus in their efforts to fight racism. Not only because it's the right thing to do, but because AAPIs know the sting of racial prejudice as well. In fact, since the beginning of this year, AAPIs all across the nation have been terrified by the rise of anti-Asian hate crimes related to the coronavirus. Mm. It started in January with dirty looks, insults, and misinformation that Asian American restaurants and businesses were more likely to have the disease and should be avoided. But in the last few months, it's escalated to spitting, yelling, and physical attacks against Asian Americans across the nation. In New York, an Asian American woman was simply taking out her garbage when a man poured acid on her, causing second degree burns on her face and arms. In Texas, a man stabbed three Asian Americans, including two children who were only ages six and two at a Sam's Club, saying that he wanted to kill Asian Americans. And in Los Angeles, a 16 year old boy was sent to the hospital after being attacked by bullies who accused him of having coronavirus simply because he's Asian. This xenophobia has been exacerbated by President Donald Trump who's trying to direct anger at China in order to deflect blame for his delayed and failed response to the coronavirus crisis. He and his followers have repeatedly used the term Chinese virus, Wuhan virus, and China plague to refer to COVID-19, even though all the health experts at the CDC and the World Health Organization have repeatedly warned not to associate the disease with a specific geographic location, or ethnicity due to the stigma it causes. In this case, associating COVID-19 has perpetuated the false belief that people of Chinese or Asian ancestry are more likely to carry and spread the disease and should be blamed for it. The danger of this anti-Asian bigotry is what led us in KPAC to take action immediately. We've taken on President Trump and his followers every time they've used the term Chinese virus. And we've issued statements, held press conferences, and written letters to the White House to tell them to stop the usage of that term. We've educated with our incredible advocates in meetings and town halls, both large and small, local and national, for AAPIs to report these hate incidents at the Stop AAPI Hate website. And for the larger American public, to engage in bystander intervention if it is safe when you witness a hate incident. And we've taken legislative action as well. Two of our KPAC members, Senator Kamala Harris from California and Congress member Grace Meng from New York introduced a congressional resolution to condemn anti-Asian coronavirus bigotry that's already received broad support in Congress. We've also successfully pushed for the inclusion of the bipartisan no Hate Act uh, in the most recent COVID-19 relief package called the HEROES Act, which the House passed last month. This bill would reverse the terrible national underreporting of hate crimes by providing grants to states to improve their hate crime tracking system and provide more resources for the police to respond to these incidents. But this bill is now stalled in the Senate, so we need your help in getting the Senate to take action. No one should be forced to suffer in silence and isolation. That's why I'm so glad that we now have this video to encourage AAPIs and all Americans to speak out and condemn racism and xenophobia whenever it rears its ugly head. Whether it's in fighting police brutality or coronavirus xenophobia, we must support each other and work together to uphold the rights of all Americans. Thank you. Thank you so much, Congresswoman. <clears throat> much appreciated. And as I said before, KPAC has been a great, great ally in bringing this together. And we look forward to doing more work and to being able to help with your work on the Tri Caucus. So thank you for that. Um, and now we will go to the last speaker just before we get the questions from the press, which will be John Yang who is the president and executive director of Asian Americans Advancing Justice 
The organization's mission is to advance the civil and human rights of Asian Americans and to create fair and equitable society. And they do public advocacy, they do litigation, they do education, and they do community engagement. Quite a full plate there. Thank you, John, and the floor is yours. Great, thank you very much. And thank you for organizing this very important event. Certainly, we are at a pivotal moment in American history. We certainly stand with Black Lives Matter and stand in solidarity with the African-American community and the racism, the anguish, and the pain that is being felt by that community. And we are in lockstep with them and take their lead in many of the structural work that needs to be done. And what we are seeing in the Asian American community, the anti-Asian racism that we are seeing, is just a symptom of the structural racism that we need to deal with. The structural racism that affects all of us. Uh, many of our previous speakers have talked about the history of racism in the Asian American community. What we are facing now with respect to COVID-19 and how it's manifested itself. And that is part of what we have to take forward in, in the work that all of us collectively need to do. One additional point I would make about anti-Asian racism is that this is not going to go away anytime soon. Even if we develop a vaccine for COVID-19, the reality is that the geopolitics between the United States and China will result in tensions that will continue to cause a backlash against the Asian American community as a whole. And why do I say this? I say this knowing the history of Japanese American incarceration during World War II. When Japanese Americans, and I have emphasized Americans, were incarcerated simply because of so-called ties to Japan. I say this also because of the history of 9-11, when we had Arab Americans, Muslim Americans, South Asian Americans, and Sikhs that were perished in the same way that we see now and murdered because of fears of terrorism. And let's be clear, we are living in fearful times and this pandemic causes us all to fear for our own personal safety. But we should take this time to unite and not think of these divisions that cause fears. One of the reasons I'm so happy to be speaking on this panel is that, frankly, I've seen all of your work, my fellow panelists, in these different forms. I represent an advocacy organization, so there's work that we do on the legislative side with people like Representative Chu, Representative Liu, that we've had the one fortune to work with. I've also seen Dr. Fu in interviews that we've actually been spliced together on uh, with respect to town halls we've done, whether it's for NBC or other places. And I've seen the work of Brian and Kelly in the PSAs that they put together. So in that sense, it's wonderful for all of us to come together. And I think that's part of it, is making sure that we all come together, address at it from all of our different places of influence to fight this racism, certainly for the Asian American community, for the, but for the community at large. The other thing I would say is about things that we can do in this moment, because certainly as an advocacy organization, and again, we often get asked, well, what can I do? And there's a few things that I would offer. First is what Representative Chu said, which is, if you are the victim of a hate incident, or if you see one happen, please report it. There are several websites that you can go to. Ours is called standagainsthatred.org that you can report these incidents. Because if we have robust data, then that allows us to make that change that we need. You can take part in what we call bystander intervention training, giving you the tools, if you are physically safe to do so, to intervene, to do something if you see an incident of hate. You know, sometimes it's as simple as saying, hey, are you okay? Sometimes if you feel like you're up to it, is to document it, to video it. Sometimes it might be saying outright, that's wrong, that's racist, you should stop that, leave that person alone. All of these things that you can do are, are things that you can be trained to do. They're common sense, but sometimes going to what other speakers have said, maybe we're a little bit fearful of taking those actions because we're not sure whether they're right or not. And, and then on what I might call the front side, the other things that we should be doing, and this all small, but we should vote. We should take part in the census. They are small, but they are necessary. I, I say there are necessary conditions to change because we have to have Congress that represents us. And so those are necessary pieces of change. We need to have a census that reflects all of us so that people understand who we are as a nation. But they're obviously not sufficient to change. You know, part of that change involves, again, the hard work, the protests, the negotiations on the Hill, all of these different pieces that will lead to that structural change that, that we're, frankly, very hungry for. So again, very happy, very honored, very privileged 
to be with all of my, what I will call friends uh, in this fight for racial justice. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, John. And now um, we'll check and see if there are any questions that have come in that should be answered at this time. Uh, let me just give a caveat that are on the topic. We know that folks of all kinds like ask, asking questions may not be related to what's the subject at hand. So uh, Josh or Renato, can somebody let me know or, or bring up the questions if there are some that we should uh, invite now, or if not, we will wrap up. <clears throat> I'm not seeing anything in the Q&A box. If folks want to use the raise hand feature, uh, we can unmute you and you can ask your question. Hey, Robert, I have another hearing I've got to go to right, at this point. All right, well, thank you so much, Ted. We again, appreciate the time. Thank you, Congress thank you. Congressman Chu. We will be back in touch if there are further questions from the press and follow up. So, um, so if there's nothing else right now, I wanna take the moment to, again to appreciate everyone's joining us today. Uh, the voices that have been heard before, the voices that haven't been heard before, and the call from Kelly to rock the boat together. Let's make sure we do that. Let's make sure that we all take action. And let's make sure that we're able to use the film and the tools we have. And let me just see that. Um, yes, I'm just checking to see that we're able to close. So thank you all to be continued. Bye.